Thank you so much for logging on and for being a part of today's broadcast. Thank you for coming on today. We are dealing with this amazing title. It's time to wake up. That's right. You know, many of us have been sleeping throughout everything going on in the realm of the spirit. But it's time to get up and let the giant within you arise, awaken that giant within you, awaken that giant within you, and keep faith alive. It is time 
to wake up as God's people. It's time to get up as God's children. It's time to get up as kingdom citizens. It's time to get up as citizens of heaven. And it's time to express the power, the faith, the goodness, the love, the mercy of God. Yes, it is. Now, I want you to click on the share button. Invite someone to join us right now. Let them come and be a part of the broadcast. Let them come in and hear what the Lord has for us today. Let them come and hear what the Lord has for us today. I believe what is about to come out today is going to be a blessing to you and to all those that will be a part of the broadcast. So invite somebody to come on. Invite somebody to be a part of this because I just know it is time to get up. It's time to wake up. It's time not to remain in a slumber. You must understand that we live in time and seasons where many people are sleeping. You cannot allow or afford to keep on sleeping and let the enemy pluck out your eyes. It's one thing when you, your eyes are plucked out because you are ignorant, but it is time to wisen up as God's people and never allow the enemy to pluck out your eyes because you are in a slumber. It is time to to get up. Father, I thank you right now for your faithfulness and your awesomeness and your goodness. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your love is always Good, truthful. You are always faithful, Lord. You are too faithful to fail. You always keep your promise and your word. Speak to us right now. Bless everyone that is in this broadcast and let your word transform our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Remember this. There is, is, there is an agenda. There is something going on on our earth today and for many people they don't understand what's happening and for some they think it's all normal for some they think it's just one of those things for some they just think you know it's just this thing going around virus whatever it may be called or this or that but it's more than that it is more than that all of this happening today, honestly, from searching, from praying, and from waiting upon the Lord, is one agenda. It is to deflate your faith and to and to make you lose faith in the things of God. What is happening is the enemy is so upset and angry because we are in the last days and things are about to happen very quickly. Things are about to take place very speedily. Things are about to manifest very quickly. And does no wonder Jesus Christ asked a question in the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 8. He said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Now that is a question every child of God, every believer, Every leader, every pastor, every apostle, every bishop, whatever whatever office you have, this is a time to ask that question. Now ask yourself, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? I want you to ask yourself, where is your faith? That's a very important question. You got to ask yourself that question. You got to answer yourself that question. There are, there are two things here. Do you have faith in the Word of God or do you have faith in the humanistic system? Do you have faith in God's Word or do you have faith in the words of the enemy? Now the question goes again. Jesus asked this question before he departed from planet Earth about 2,000 years ago. He said, when the Son of Man returns, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Now, when I look at that, I don't know about you, but when I read the scripture, I, I many oftentimes take God's word, you know, with literal interpretation, and I try not to over-spiritualize what I read. It's very simple. He said, when Jesus returns, will he find faith? And we can see that the coming of the Lord is drawing very near. We are in the last days. We are in the end times. God, Jesus Christ, is coming back again. And it's happening. Any time now, the rapture is about to take place. 
And now, where is your faith? Will he find faith on earth when he return? Will he still find you faithful, holding on to his word? Or are you going to be holding on to humanistic ideas? Or are you going to be holding on to the, to the, to the words propagated by the enemy of the gospel? Are you going to be holding on to what the enemy says or what the devil says? Or will you hold on to the word of God? When I return, Jesus said, will I find faith? On the earth. Remember when he says, Will I find faith on the earth? It's, it's not referring to some lingering face around, it's referring to a man or woman like you. We used to hold on to the word of God. You must remember this. The challenge of brought about by the enemy is just to deflate your faith. That is very important. Of course, to challenge the word of God and to and to make it appear or seem like that God's word is not going to come to pass. But the enemy is a loser. The enemy is a liar. Now, let's look at this in context as we read right now Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 to verse 8. He said, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to, to show them that they should always pray, always pray, and never give up. Always pray, and never give up. Always pray. And never give up. This is not a time to give up. This is not a time to retreat. This is not a time to go backward. We should always be going forward. Always pray and not give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, Give me justice in this dispute. With my enemy, the judge ignored her for a while, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God and I care about nobody. But this woman is driving me crazy, the judge said. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant request. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? I mean, oh my God, when I read of this scripture, I just really want to scream and shout on top of my lungs. Where is your faith? And I'm telling you, it's time to keep your faith alive. This is not a time to back up. This is not a time to retreat. This is not a time to be afraid. This is not a time to follow the rules of the enemy. It is a time to keep your faith alive because the enemy have different agendas. And I thank God the Bible says we are not ignorant of the agendas, the tactics of the enemy. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. The enemy surely has devices, agendas. He has plans and his plan is to deflate your faith and that's why the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast. That's right. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, without shaking, without going sideways, without being afraid, without being scared. Head. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Let us hold fast to the word of God. Let us hold fast to what God says. Let us hold fast. We're in a time and season where everyone needs to hold fast to the word of God. Now, let's keep on reading that particular scripture. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful who has promised. Oh my God, we serve a God who is so faithful. Our God is too faithful to fail. Let us hold fast. God is too faithful to fail. He's too faithful to fail. He will never fail. That is God. He said, hold fast to your profession of faith. Hold fast to what you believe in the beginning. Hold fast to the word of God. Hold fast to your confidence in God. And let it look at what it says in the next verse. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And look at 25. Not forsaking. 
not because God knows these times are coming, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some are, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the days are approaching. And that is it. Many believers right now, they believe the days are approaching. They believe Jesus Christ is coming back and is coming back very soon. And we just read the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 8. And verse, verse 8, he said, When the Son of Man returns, will he still find faith on earth? And he tells us here, in verse 25 of Hebrews chapter 10, not forsaking the assembly of yourself together. Why? Because the days are drawing very close. So the enemy's plan and agenda and strategy is that you forsake the assembly of yourself together because the enemy already knows that the days are drawing so near. And if you are if you are still asleep, wake up and smell the coffee. The days are coming close. The days of the Lord is approaching near. The coming back of Jesus Christ is eminent and it's closer today than it was 2,000 years ago. So it is not a time to forsake the assembly of yourself together. It's a time to fight against anything that is trying to keep you from getting together as God has said in his word. That is right, and I'm saying it very clearly again. It, this is not the time to forsake the assembly of yourself together, but it is time to come together. Why? Because the days are coming near. That's what the Bible says. He said, let us hold fast, and it tells us in Luke chapter 8 verse 18, when the Son of Man returns, Will he still find faith on earth? When Jesus returns, will he still find those who are faithful to this word? This word says, not forsaken. You see, we sometimes, a lot of people just decide how to basically take, God, take the word of God. Just take it. You just take it what he says. He said, don't forsake the assemblies of yourself together. Most especially... Because the days are coming near. And he said in Luke chapter 8, will he find faith? Because it's is, it is coming back soon. Will he find faith when he returns? He said, he said, will I find faith when I come back? He said, will I find faith when I return? Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth when I return? And he says, don't you distance yourself from each other. Because the days are coming near. It's very simple. I don't know where we are. Are we still sleeping? Are we still sleeping? We got to get up. We got to wake up. We got to wake up. The days are coming near. The days are the day of the Lord is coming. It's happening. The day of the Lord, the return of Jesus is eminent. It's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. It's coming back soon. Don't allow the news to fool you. Don't Keep on sleeping. Wake up from that slumber. Wake up from that sleep. Wake up from that sleep. And whatever thing that would that would make you not fulfill this word of God in your life, you got to fight against it. Because the Bible tells me very clearly in verse 8 of Shalok 18, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? And it now tells me, Hebrews 10, 25, 25, don't forsake yourself from meeting together. Why? Because the days are coming very close. Because the day of the Lord is approached. Isn't that very simple? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to get this. You don't have to be, you know, a Bible scholar to understand. It's very simple. He said, I, I, I want to dwell on that a little bit. He said, number one, when I return, will I find faith? Number two, don't forsake yourself to God because, because I'm coming back very soon. Because the day of the Lord is approaching very quickly. That is the most reason why you need to get together. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So God wants us 
not to forsake the assembly of his people together. Some say, but where two or three are gathered. That is right. That is very correct. Maybe you are two or three gathering right now, but that is not what the Lord is talking about. talking about an assembly. That's correct. An assembly. Don't forget it. The assembly of ourselves together. Just take it. It's the word of God. It's not a time to try to rationalize it because of the news you are hearing everywhere. It's not a time to try to 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 you know to try to rationalize God's word because of the news. Come on, you got to believe the word of God at all times, whether in whether in seasons or out of season. We got to preach the word, and we got to believe what God's word says. But God wants you to remain faithful because the enemy knows that faith pleases God it tells us Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 without faith it is impossible to please God now one way to quickly displease God is when your faith is deflated right is that one way to quickly displease God is when your faith is deflated Deflated faith displeases God. Deflated faith displeases God. Deflated faith displeases God. So when your faith is dis- deflated, then you displease God. And when you displease God, You don't reach the heart of God. We must know that the opposite of faith, we know, is some say it's doubt, and that's true. But ultimately, doubt leads to fear. And we know that fear is a paralyzing force. All of the agenda of the enemy is to bring about fear. So you you can doubt the word of God. You can doubt God and listen to to the agenda of the enemy. The enemy has an agenda. And we must never allow his agenda to stand. We must vigorously please our master. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing. Romans 10 verse 17. And hearing by the word of God. That's right. We've heard this many times preached to us by our preachers. And everywhere we go. That faith comes by hearing. In the same token, fear comes by hearing. And hearing words that are contrary to to the word of God. Fear is a paralyzing force. Fear is a paralyzing agent. Fear is there to deflate your faith and to make you displease God. Because when God is displeased, it means that you have no faith. And that's why he's asking us this question. Will he find faith when he returns? And it's coming back very soon. It's time to be faithful. It's time to remain faithful. It's time to keep your faith alive. How do we do this? You have to watch what you hear and how you hear it. No, it's important. You know, I think of the story of David and Goliath in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 8 to verse 11. A very interesting story. Let me read the scripture first, then we'll try to expound on that. Then he took, then he then he stood and cried out, referring to Goliath of Gath. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, We, why have you come to out, out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servants of Saul, choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight at me with me and kill me, then who will be your servant? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and servers. Uh, Look at verse 10. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man and we that we may fight together. Now verse 11 is a key verse I want to draw out today. When Saul, and this is New King James Version. 1 Samuel 17, 11. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So you can see the way the enemy goes about it. The enemy's agenda basically is to use words to deflate your faith, to make you afraid, to make you be dismayed and greatly afraid. 
And that's why, that is why you must pay attention to what you hear. Any words that gets you to the point that you are afraid and fear with fear is not originating from the throne of God or the word of God. In as much as you want to hear all the news all around, the best news to hear is the good news of the love of God and his plan for humanity. And this good news of God's word says that God loves you with an everlasting love. And this good news says you should keep your faith alive. You should choose what you hear and listen to. I know it takes a lot of discipline, but you can choose to listen to the word of God. That's right. We live in a time and season where your faith must come alive. Where you need to wake up and don't keep on sleeping. Where you must understand what is happening is, is, is a strategic agenda of the enemy. But we thank God because the Bible tells us that what the enemy meant for evil, that God is able to turn it around for good. No matter what you're going through right now, no matter the circumstances that are against you now, you must keep your faith alive. No matter how things may look like, wherever you are watching and listening to me, wherever you are, whatever, wherever you are, and whatever state of mind, condition you are at the moment, it's time to keep your faith alive. I mean, your faith in the Word of God. It's time to go back to the basic of the Word of God and keep your faith alive and make up your mind, I am going to believe God's Word. I'm going to believe what God's Word says. I'm going to listen to what the Word of God says and keep my faith in God alive. Because the Bible says, God said, it takes no pleasure in those who turn back. From what they believe God's word says. Because if you believe what God says as such at one time and you turn back from that because of what you are hearing now, God says, I don't have pleasure in stuff like that. So God takes pleasure when you are when you remain consistently the same in your belief and in your trust in his word. That no matter what you hear around, no matter what people say, no matter all those who may be against you, you just keep on believe on the word of God and keep your faith alive because at the end of the day, you win. At the end of the day, victory belongs to you. No disease will afflict your body. No sickness will come close to your body. That's what the Bible says. And I understand that people are hearing all kinds of news all over the globe, but, I, but the best news you must hear today is the news of keeping your faith alive. Is the news of remaining persistent and consistent in your prayer. And that's why Jesus is telling us, telling us that we ought to pray and not to faint. It's time to get to the place of prayer. And what is prayer? Prayer is not just only communicating to God. Prayer is also making declaration and decreeing things to manifest on this earth. Because you, you God has given this earth to, to the sons of men. And we must not allow the enemy to continue to have a field day under our walls. No, we refuse to have that happen. We want every one of you that is watching today to just let your faith arise, rise up, stop sleeping, stop being afraid, and stop allowing the news to derail you. Stop allowing the negativity around you to make you lose faith in the Word of God. You have to continuously trust in the Word of God. Don't even allow the way you feel to make you go draw backward. No. God says it does not take pleasure in the ones that draws back. Don't you draw back. Keep your faith alive. What you believe five years ago, six months ago, about God's love and God's faithfulness, believe that today. That word that you believe, that word that was preached to you many years ago about, about your faith in God and, and God can do all things and, and all things are possible to them that believe that, and that no disease can afflict your body. Believe that today. Hold on to that today. This is not the time to, to let that be on the side. This is the time to hold on to that word of God. Whatever you have been taught that is rightly God's word, it's time to hold on to that. This is not the time to begin to change and turn things around and begin to become, you know, 
trying to not follow God's word because everybody else is backing up. No, it's a time for you to stand up. If we stand up, if we stand up and believe and have your faith in the word of God, nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. The Bible says that nothing, that nothing is impossible to them that believe in the word of God. God wants you to have faith and confidence in him. He doesn't want you to to think the way everybody else is thinking if it's not in line with the word of God. That's why it tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 11 to verse 12, the New Living Translation, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. That is Isaiah 8, 11, New Living Translation. Don't call everything a conspiracy like they do and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Now, this is the word for you. Glory be to God. He said, he just said, he said right here, don't, don't think like everyone else does. Don't call everything a conspiracy like they do and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Glory be to God. So it is time, it is time to bring, to, to, to keep your faith alive. It is time to believe what God said. It is time, it is time, it is time to wake up. It is time to get up. It is time to get up from that sleep. It is time to get up from that slumber. It is time to get up and be awake. It is time to get up. It is time to be awake. It is time to allow your faith to come alive. It is time to allow the power of God to be demonstrated through you. That's why I say today is Tuesday. This Sunday is Easter Sunday. Actually, it's it's, it's is 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 resurrection sunday that's that's right and we are going to be celebrating the resurrection of jesus christ it is a moment of truth it is a message that must be spread out to everyone i'm going to invite you specially the address should be on the screen if you have nowhere to go i want you to make your way to 1020 evan street and i want you to come and let's flood the place with the crowd and with the presence of god you come out you come out and let us send a message to the devil that nothing has the ability to stop those who have faith and confidence in the word of god that the enemy might threaten you or frighten you by using a disease as a frightening as, as a frightening mechanism but that you make up your mind you are going to trust the word of god you are going to believe god's word and that the enemy would have no say or the ability to stop you because you believe the word of god God. So it's coming on this Sunday. Get ready. Get prepared. It's going to be an amazing time. I see God moving. I see it's going to be an epic moment. I see God moving. I see great things are happening. I see the forces of darkness is being pulled down. I see the kingdom of darkness is put to shame. I see the agenda of the Satan is coming to naught. I see the agenda of putting people to fear is collapsing in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, come out and let us celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's celebrate the goodness of God. Let's celebrate the love of God. Let's celebrate God, as we should at all times, it doesn't matter how things may look like. This is the time to actually express the love and the power of God to our generation. No wonder the Bible said the old creation waiting and longing endlessly for the manifestation of the sons of God. And that's referring to you. So you got to manifest God. God, you got to rise up and let your faith come alive. This is a time where your faith must come alive. This is a time where your faith in God must come alive, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of those who may be against you. Remember, if God is for you, you are majority, and who can be against you and succeed? Nobody. In the name of Jesus, you just 
hold on to the word of God, you believe God, and no disease can be against you, no demon can be against you, no death can be against you, you just hold on to the word of God, you believe God's word, you trust the word of God, and let all hell break loose, and the enemy will have no place in your life, and no sickness will come close to your dwelling, no disease will ever attach itself to your body, because you carried so much of God, God on the inside of you. And when you carry God in you, no devil can attach itself to you. And all this agenda of the enemy cannot succeed in your life. And we make a decision to hold on to the word of God and to believe the word of God regardless of what anybody thinks or says. Because this time we are in the last days and it's in the last day perilous time shall come. In the last days Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth? In the last days Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth? In the last this Jesus said we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together like the manner of some are. In the last day, Jesus said you better get yourself together all the time because you because the day is approaching. Why is it not? Wake up. Wake up. Stop being in a slumber. Wake up and keep your faith alive. Man, goodness, I am really out of time but never out of word. But I'm glad you've logged in today. I want you to click on the share button. Start a watch party. Do something. Let your friends come and be a part. And for everyone of you who, that are watching, that have joined me from different continents of the world, I see some of my friends from Pakistan and, and some Europe and, of course, all the way in the U.S. and some from Africa, wherever you are. I want to thank you for being a part and for being a support to this ministry. Thank you for supporting this ministry one way or the other. Thank you for supporting us in your prayers. We covet your prayers this time. Thank you for supporting us in just being a part of this broadcast and for sharing it. We, we thank you for that. And those that also support financially, whatever way you do, we thank you for that. If you want to support financially, there is a click on your, there's a link on your butt, on your TV, whatever you're watching this, you can support financially. But mostly, support at this moment just by clicking on the share button and share this all over. Let this go, let this ministry page go viral. Share this with your friends. That is one of your greatest supports. And also, keep us in prayer. Keep us praying for this ministry. Keep us praying for this ministry. Because what God has for us through this ministry is beyond our widest imagination. But man, thank you for being a part. Until we see you again tomorrow morning, remember this. You have been destined to win and there is nothing the devil can do about it. Keep on walking by faith and not by sight. God bless you. God bless you richly. God reward you. God faith. May his face shine upon you. May the love of God move mightily upon your life. May his protection abide with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.